Hello guys, welcome to our channel Ask Prep. Today's series is for 11th class biology. We will be studying chapter 20 locomotion and movement in detail. We have also added important notes for your exam preparation. All the best for your exam. Starting with introduction with locomotion in animals, locomotion refers to the deliberate movement of animals, which varies depending on their environment. Animals move for various reasons, such as finding food, shelter, mates, favorable primates, or escaping predators. Types of movement Evolution has led to different modes of movement, from ammonites using jet propulsion to snails moving via sticky locomotion with their muscular foot. Humans, uniquely bipedal, walk on two legs, while other modes of movement in animals are more diverse. There are three kinds of movement which are ciliary, amoeboid, and muscular. Ciliary movement, found in organs lined with ciliate epithelium, such as the fallopian tubes, aiding in egg movement, and respiratory passages for clearing dust. Amoeboid movement, seen in white blood cells, macrophages, and amoeba, involving pseudopods for movement. Muscular movement, the most common form in animals, involving the contraction and relaxation of muscles. Next topic is muscle. An adult human's body has between 650 and 840 muscles according to anatomy. Three types of muscles can be distinguished from these ones. Skeletal muscle, also known as striated muscles, these are responsible for posture and movement. They are connected to bones and under voluntary control. Visceral muscle, these smooth muscles are found in the walls of internal organs like the digestive and reproductive tracts. They are involuntary and help with functions like moving food through the digestive system. Cardiac muscle, found only in the heart, these muscles are striated and involuntary, ensuring continuous heart contractions. Structure of muscle, a fascicle is made up of several muscular bundles in skeletal muscle. Multiple muscular fibers make up each muscle bundle. Sarcolemma is the name for the plasma membrane that is placed on the muscle fibers. The sarcoplasm is encircled by the sarcolemma, or muscle membrane. Muscle fibers contain several nuclei referred to as syncytium. Sarcoplasmic reticulum is the term for the endoplasmic reticulum found in muscle fibers. Muscle contraction is aided by the calcium ions that are kept in the sarcoplasmic reticulum. Myofibrils, or parallel strands of myofilaments, are found inside muscle fibers. The fibrous tissue that envelopes the skeletal muscle is called the epimysium. The two types of proteins, myosin and actin, that give skeletal muscle its distinctive stripes are present. The light stripes are active and go by the name isotropic bands. However, the dark stripes are known as myosin protein containing anisotropic bands. Actin filaments are thin filaments, whereas myosin filaments are dense filaments. In the middle of every actin stripe is an elastic fiber known as the Z-line. Sarcomeres are the segments of myofibrils that lie between two successive Z-lines. The functional unit of muscular contraction is known as the sarcomere. Structure of contractile protein, actin and myosin are the two primary contractile proteins. G-actin, often known as globular actin, is the name of the actin monomer unit. F-actin, or F-filament, is created when G-actin polymerases. To create actin molecules, two F-filaments wind around one another. The effactin is encircled by the protein tropomyosin. Tropomyosin contains an even distribution of a different protein called troponin. Moromyosin is the name for the monomeric form of myosin. The two components of every meromyosin are a lengthy tail and a spherical head. Actin binding sites and ATPase activity are present in the spherical head. Skeletal system 
An adult skeletal system is made up of roughly 206 bones, all of which are joined together by a web of cartilage, tendons, and ligaments. Given that it can sustain forces greater than 4,000 newtons, the femur is a rather amazing bone. These figures, however, can vary depending on the attack's position and angle. Muscle fibers with smaller units called myofibrils make up skeletal muscle. Each myofibril is composed of three different types of proteins, contractile, regulatory, and structural proteins. Actin and myosin are two types of contractile proteins. Actin is a thin filament made up of two helical filamentous actin strands, and each filamentous actin strand is made up of several units of actin helix. Two filaments of regulatory proteins, troponin and tropomyosin, are periodically observed alongside the F-actin. Troponin covers myosin binding sites on actin filaments during muscular relaxation. Axial skeletal system The axial skeleton consists of 80 bones, including the skull, vertebral column, and rib cage. Skull protects the brain with 22 bones, 8 cranial, and 14 facial bones. Vertebral column consists of 33 vertebrae, categorized as cervical, thoracic, lumbar, sacral, and coccyx. The spinal cord runs through the neural canal of the vertebrae. The occipital condyle is joined to the first vertebra, known as the atlas. Starting from the head, the spine, also known as the vertebral column, is separated into seven cervicals, 12 thoracic, 5 lumbar, 1 sacral, and 1 coccyx. Mammals retain their number of cervical vertebrae. Appendicular skeletal system The appendicular skeletal system is made up of limb bones and girdles. Each limb has 30 bones. Forelimb bones the bones of the front leg or arm or forelimb are the humerus, radius and ulna, wrist, eight carpal bones and metacarpal bone, five palm bones and phalanges, 14 digit bones. Hind limb bones, there are several bones present in the hind leg or limb which are the femur, the thigh bone, the longest bone, tibia and fibula, and seven tarsals, the ankle bones, five metatarsals and 14 phalanges. The cup-shaped bones present on the knees are called the patella. The scapula and the collarbone clavicle make up the pectoral girdle. The glenoid cavity in the scapula connects to the forelimb bones and creates a hinge with the humerus in the shape of a ball and socket joint. The acetabulum, a cup-shaped chamber in the pelvic girdle, connects the thigh muscles to the pelvic girdle and forms a spherical ball and socket joint with the femur which is connected to the bones of the hind leg. Joints Joints are crucial for mobility as they connect bones or cartilage. They are categorized based on their structure and movement capabilities. Fibrous joints These are removable joints where bones are connected by dense fibrous connective tissue. An example is the sutures in the skull, which fuse the flat bones of the cranium. Cartilaginous joints in these joints, bones are connected by cartilage, allowing limited movement. An example is the joints between the vertebrae in the spinal column. Synovial joints, these are the most mobile joints, characterized by a synovial cavity filled with fluid between articulating bones. Synovial joints include Ball and socket joints, allow multi-directional movement, example hip and shoulder joints. Hinge joints allow movement in one direction, like a door hinge, example elbow and knee joints. Next is disorders of the muscular and skeletal system, myasthenia gravis, an autoimmune disease that impairs neuromuscular junctions, leading to muscle weakness and paralysis. It affects skeletal muscles involved in voluntary movements. Muscular dystrophy a group of genetic disorders that cause progressive weakening and breakdown of skeletal muscles over time. Tenny, this condition is characterized by involuntary muscle spasms due to low calcium ion levels in body fluids. Arthritis, inflammation of the joints, leading to pain, swelling, and limited movement. 
It includes various types such as osteoarthritis and rheumatoid arthritis. Gout, caused by the accumulation of uric acid crystals in the joints, leading to painful inflammation, commonly affecting the big toe. Osteoporosis, a condition where bone mass decreases, making bones brittle and more susceptible to fractures. It is often age-related and linked to lower estrogen levels, particularly in postmenopausal women. Thanks for watching the video. We will drop the notes in the description of this video. If you found this video helpful, please like, subscribe and share. See you in the next video and all the best for your exam.